You guys were kind of going through that little slump at the end of the year, the, mm -hmm. the four games before heading into the playoffs. Could you have envisioned that the switch getting flipped quite the way it did? I, I know you still expect you guys to be successful, but yeah. to, to just kind of roll yeah. the way you guys have. Yeah, we, we've played like this um, throughout the season. You know, we've kind of had fits and starts at times uh, where we've, you know, the first three months of the season, we were one of the better offenses in all of baseball and then went through a little bit of a lull. Certainly picked it back up near the end. Um, but, yeah, that last, the last four games, we didn't swing the bats well at all. It's been good to see. I think our approach is sort of 180'd. Um, you know, we're doing a good job of getting good pitches to hit, and we're not missing. And we're starting to drive the ball quite a bit. So it's, it's definitely been a big piece to why we're standing here today, for sure, as the offense's turn around. Nick? You, you may have just answered it. I was just going to say, what do you make of the, all the power? Um, just, I, I know you have guys that can leave the park, but like the rate at which they've yeah. been doing, it's been pretty We're long. getting good pitches to hit. I think that's, I think that's what we're doing. We're, we're not, I think during that period in July and August, we weren't, <clears throat> we weren't impacting the ball, the balls that we should have been on a consistent basis. And I think, you know, we had quite a few home runs going up through that period in the middle of the season. And then I think the dry spell was more, more that than anything. Chris? It's impossible to be perfect, even for a baseball team. But are there things that you'd like to see this team either improving upon or things you saw in the regular season that still maybe haven't carried over here into the postseason that you think can take them kind of to the even higher level? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing we're not doing. I don't, I don't think we're – there's nothing that I would say from a – criticism standpoint or being critical of the way we're playing <clears throat> I think the style with which I mean if the if the if the offensive power output doesn't continue the way at the rate it is we're going to still need to be able to do the things that we've done well during the course of the season which is get on base and run and create problems uh, on the basis Jesse <clears throat> hey Mike um, to the casual fan I'm sure like they think of Tommy Pham the thing that went on off the field with him most recently I guess with fantasy football and all that. When you're going to pick a guy up like that, what, what kind of due diligence do you have to do? Because that was kind of a very public thing. Yeah, we asked a lot of questions. We asked a lot of questions of players and clubhouses <clears throat> that he's been on, teammates, um, staff members, and what you got back had, didn't align with what you may have seen publicly. You know, <clears throat> We were told how hard he worked, how obsessed he was with being good. Um, in his practice every day. And I think our team is fairly serious under the hood. I think we work really hard. We have a good young group of guys that do that. So we felt like that was going to be a really good match. And it has been a great match. Jesse, down here. <clears throat> Mike, I know it's way too early to, to evaluate a, a trade this, this early. But it, it seems like without the, the Gabby Moreno, Lourdes Gurriel mm -hmm. trade, you guys might not be here at, at this point today. Just curious your thoughts on, on that in retrospect. Right yeah, now. look, it's, it, th th I think that trade's still a win for both sides. Honestly, Don Vosch is a really good player. He's an elite defensive player. He has power. Yeah, um, Gabby's had a fantastic season. So has Lourdes. I, I think to the point, would we be here without them? No, because Carson Kelly went down for the first eight weeks of the season. Um, we wouldn't, I don't know where we would have been standing from a catching standpoint. Had we done that, we wouldn't have had a starting catcher necessarily. We probably would have gone out and acquired somebody else in the, in, in the off season. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, Gabby's done a really good job shutting down the running game. And I think, I think with the new rules, that became a big deal for us being able to shut down the running game. JP on the left. Mike, uh, congratulations. I wonder if you, you can go back to the 2019 draft, two picks apart, Stott and Carroll. Yeah. What were the conversations like around that time? Yeah. I wonder how, to what extent was Stott on your board at one point as well? We love Bryson Stott. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that added to the, to the, to the best walk-up song in, in baseball, I think. Guy gets, guy gets where he plays, you know? It's, it's a... Um, gives the people what he wants with that, with that song. Um, we love both players. Um, we were on Bryson very early. Um, we loved the way he played the game. We had Corbin a little ahead of him. Um, but I know they were neck and neck, and we were hoping one of them was going to get to us at the time when it happened, yeah. Down here on the right. Hey, Mike, the TV cameras caught you the, in the last game going kind of crazy up there. Just what was the feeling like to, to kind of yeah, get we, to this we, point? We won a playoff series. I, I mean, if, if they want me to... You know, I don't know. You win a playoff series in this league. We haven't been in the playoffs in six years. There's been a lot of hard works, a lot of, lo a lot of stuff that's been lived through, a um, lot of effort by manager, coaches, players to get to that point. Um, 
the Dodgers have wiped the floor with us for six straight years. Um, yeah, being able to beat them, there, there's no, there wasn't an added satisfaction. I mean, winning the playoff series was the added satisfaction, but, um, you know, it, I, I'm, one of the things that I, I, I feel like I'm trying to learn, I'm not, I've never been good at this, um, is enjoying and appreciating certain moments that you have in your life that I don't think I was very good at before. So, yeah. If we win games at home, I'm 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 gonna jump in the pool four times. I love real quick, Mike. The moment before the game with mm -hmm. your kids throwing out the first pitch. Yeah. What was that like for you to watch? Incredible, incredible. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, we were we were such a baseball family. Like the Diamondbacks meant so much to her. The Red Sox before that. The Indians before that, like, and it wasn't necessarily just because of baseball, it was because of how much it meant to me and to our kids. And so to watch them ha sort of have that moment, you know, where, where the one thing that Nicole said to me as she was, as she was dying was that she didn't want to be forgotten. We, we, we could all, right, we could all understand that feeling, you know, time moves on, everybody knows what happens and she didn't want to be forgotten. And that moment gave us another opportunity to talk about her. And that's what I'm most appreciative when Ken and Derek asked if that would be okay. Um, that's what I'm most appreciative of is that we got another chance to talk about her. Over here on the right. Hey, Mike. Um, what is your impression of how close these players are and how important do you think that is to going on a deep run like this? Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of them have come up together. Um, I, we have some experience with that in other places of watching some of the kids come up together, develop together. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think it means a lot. I do. I think it matters. I think in the moments when, in the postseason, when when the anxiety ratchets up, when the when the when the when everything matters a little bit more, I think the trust around and playing for and with the people that you love in your clubhouse. I, I, I do. I don't know. I can't objectively prove that, but it feels that way. And I, this is a this is a very close clubhouse, and and it's an enjoyable team to be around. Not not just because they're good people, but they work so hard. They're passionate about this. They, you know, the guys like Tommy and Longo and and Seawalk and the and it it's it's a it's a good group of guys to be able to, f you know, feel good about the success that they're having. Back left. <clears throat> oh, when you guys lost 110 games two years ago, was there any? apprehension that boy we're not <laughs> heading in the right direction or could you even envision being in this spot two years later yeah there was a lot of apprehension around that <laughs> uh yeah you, you don't lose 110 games by accident i think the biggest piece of and nick and steve and i have talked about this a lot like <clears throat> the biggest misinformation around that we we weren't we weren't tanking that season we weren't trying to lose we were trying to win I felt we put a team out there that had a chance to compete. So we didn't just lose 110 games. We weren't doing it on purpose either. Um, and yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a long off season. It was a long off season. We knew we had the formation of some good players in the minor league system, but we've all been through this before. Players coming up through your system prospects, you never know how they're going to move on to this stage and how they're going to perform when they get there. Um, so it's satisfying to be here in this moment to this point, we have a lot of work left to do. Our goal is to win the World Series. It's been our goal since, since day one. Um, I know it hasn't always looked the brightest for us, um, but yeah, it's satisfying to be playing in the middle of October um, when, when the alternative is being at home. Over here on the right. Thinking back to after that season, what was your pitch to Stromy to come out of retirement to join a 110 loss team? I think it wasn't a it wasn't a huge pitch. I, I, I you know I think he had obviously has the fire. I mean he is as intense as anybody we have. Um, I think the motivation we had a lot of the younger pitchers around. I think he was excited about that. I think he had that when he was in Houston at one point. Obviously that team then developed into a sort of an older club. But when I think they first started out, it was a young team that they kind of brought along. And I think he saw some of that in us. But you'd have to ask him that question. Is this what you envisioned his impact kind of being on this pitching staff? I know the pitching staff isn't 100 percent to where you want it to be, but but certain pieces. Yeah, I mean, look, given given where given the the fact that I handed him three rookie starters for the for the majority of the season, um, 
to see our pitching getting us to this point, I, I feel pretty good about where our pitching is. Jake on the left. Um, catching position is probably the hardest to quantify the intangibles on a spreadsheet or a box score. When you went out and traded for Gabby Moreno over the offseason, <clears throat> what were some of the things about him that made you feel comfortable going and acquiring a catcher that maybe you didn't have a whole lot of experience with? I'm not sure I can honestly tell you that in retrospect that we had those all those boxes checked. You do your due diligence, you ask a lot of questions, you try to figure it out, but not just a young player, but a young player at the hardest position in baseball. There's a lot of unknowns there. We knew he could really throw. We knew his makeup. We knew he could block. Um, how the game calling has come and matured and, and moved along. You, I don't know. Nobody knows those things. I just don't. Like you, you, it's, it's, through, it's through good coaching, I, I think. A lot of the work, a lot of the preparation that we do is not just for preparing the pitcher, it's preparing the catcher. And he works hard at what we need him to work hard at, and he's improved tremendously. You, you hope that's what the outcome is going to be. That's why you, <clears throat> I think you acquire the makeup that you acquire in the hopes that that's part of what comes along. And he's a smart kid. And... Um, yeah, we, we, like I said, we, we probably wouldn't be here without him. Jesse. Mike, I know you guys made a, a difficult decision at one point in the year to send down Kevin Ginkle. Just curious how he's kind of emerged in the second half of the season. Yeah, we've sent down pretty much our entire roster at some point during the season. It's not what you hope to have happen, but we got to that point. I, I am, I, I mean, some of those, the guys that you're proud of, Kevin, um, we sent down our all-star from 2022 in the middle of the season with zero complaints, full accountability. Um, we sent down our starting center fielder, full accountability. And, and, and that's what you're proud of to see them now standing on this stage and having success. And without Joe, and without Kevin in our bullpen, we, you know, we, I, don't, I don't know how we navigate through those last five games. They, they were so good for us. Take two more, JP, and then we'll finish with Chris. Mike, what were the greatest impacts that you picked up from Dave Dombrowski the years that you yeah. worked with him in Boston? He, he rarely misses when he goes and acquires big game players. And, yeah, we, I, you know, I don't maybe have the, the ability at all times to go, you know, map out a roster, but he puts star players um, on his rosters, and they come and they perform. And... He's done that everywhere he's gone. And <clears throat> I think at times some of us can get caught up in, myself included, in what's, you know, what's the plan for now and what's the plan for tomorrow, which we're responsible for for sure. Um, not taking a season for granted and pushing into, into your team even when things aren't going great. Um, that, that's probably one of the biggest takeaways I have is, you know, in the, in the, in the, the fervor with which he goes after, you know, being in this position. Um, and, you know, I think he's one of the best executives in all of baseball for a reason. And he's done it with, I don't know, we're on team number four now, so team number five, like I lost count, but he does, he does a really good job. <clears throat> Chris. Mike, this run, some people said, might have been a year ahead of schedule, but it was always going to hopefully be a run that was kind of fueled by young players you drafted and developed, and one of them, Jordan Lawler, his role right now, certainly in this postseason, hasn't been one of a starting one. So whenever this postseason kind of comes to an end and you have those conversations with him, what do you hope he takes away from this and, and the expectations from him, certainly, moving forward as you kind of hope to, to come back here year after year? Yeah, I hope all the young players are absorbing this. I hope the, the young players are appreciating that this doesn't come around all the time, that it takes a lot to get here. It takes a lot of things going well for you to get here. It takes your team playing well at the right time for you to get here. Um, I hope the watching what our good players are doing in these moments that you're going to learn from. Um, <clears throat> and he's going to have a chance, I think, at some point in the next few games to, to make an impact somewhere, somehow, and, and hope that he's ready. And, and he will be. Uh, he'll be he's he's going to be a big part of what we're doing now and in the future.